Ever since Biden assumed office, there has been a flurry of attempts to label his economic policy vision. These labels include everything from socialism to Keynesianism to a Europeanization of the US economy. And many of these labels are motivated by political tactics rather than based on actual economic analysis. The objective of the study is to address the existing socioeconomic challenges, consider Biden's social and economic agenda, and to see how they might line up with existing economic theories. When Biden used the campaign slogan, Battle for the Soul of the Nation, he was especially concerned with rising income inequality and the lack of access to economic opportunities in the US. And indeed, when looking at income inequality, the US has among the highest level of income inequality among all OECD countries. Also, when looking at indicators related to income inequalities, surveys suggest that US citizens are becoming increasingly unhappy, health indicators related to substance abuse deteriorate, and educational, educational attainment levels are comparatively rather low. Most importantly, however, competition in many key sectors of the economy has been declining and market concentration has been on the rise. A major conclusion of the report is that rising income inequality in the US is not so much due to the lack of redistribution, but due to the lack of domestic competition. I argue that Bidenomics is much more in the spirit of classical economics than what many people may think. And Adam Smith, for example, the father of modern economics, he already stated, no society can surely be flourishing and be happy of which the far greater part of the members are poor and miserable. And Adam Smith moreover believed that the state must not be reduced to a night watchman state. He advocated instead for an administration of justice that provides public goods such as education and health. I therefore conclude that what many may call socialism in Biden's economic agenda is in fact a correction <clears throat> of market failures and is aimed at strengthening competition. The short answer is no, but to address this question more fully, it is first necessary to define Europe's economy. According to Europe's constitution, Europe is a social market economy. And social market economics is a branch of economic thought that originated in Germany during the 1930s and shaped German and European post-World War II economic philosophy. And social market economics explicitly seeks to balance the freedom in the market with equitable social development. And this is opposite to capitalism, which is exclusively concerned with self-interest, and also opposite to socialism, which is exclusively concerned with equitable development and equality. So as a major obstacle that prevents the US from becoming more like the European style social market economy, has to do with the fact that the very term social market economy is highly stigmatized in the US. But for most Europeans, the term social market economy simply sounds right. And the idea enjoys great political support. The US on the other hand, lacks a similar broadly accepted identification with a distinct economic philosophy. So in light of those political constraints, it is rather unlikely to expect the US to turn more towards a European style social market economy. It may sound surprising 
to many, but for biodynamics to be a cure for the US socioeconomic challenges, competition and market access opportunities must drive equitable social development, not redistribution. The biggest challenges lie in competition policy. Compared to Europe, the US economy may be much freer, but economic freedom has led to much more market concentrations. Europe, on the other hand, may have many more regulations, but these regulations have led to more competition in many areas. In my paper, I conclude that if Biden is unsuccessful in promoting more competition, his economic agenda will likely remain a band-aid, not a cure.